Do you mind if I just briefly ask you about what room you're in? I love that you have your posters in there. Is this your like your office? <laughs> so this, this is my this is my office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in fact, this is where this is where I've been um, uh, editing Venom as well. I mean, Venom Two. You know, I've been I've literally because we got we got locked down really early in the process of of, of editing. So so I've I've literally been connecting with uh, with with Stan, who's my editor, out and out, out in the states over there. I say over there. That's where my screen is. Um, <laughs> Is that crazy? Like, is that, this is something I want to ask you. And again, I, I'm not going to ask you anything about uh, Venom specifically. I know you can't get into details or stories. But because you mentioned the editing, this is something I just wanted to know in general. Um, while being home and editing a project, does that give you a weird sense of like, because you might have more time to work on it, you might start making changes to it that you might not normally do if you didn't have this much time? Or are you finding your creative process to be different at this time? Oh, very much so. I mean, I mean, the very... You know, I mean, you're used to working on these big visual effects movies with remote, remotely. You know, so you're talking to visual effects vendors in Canada or or, or the UK or in wherever. You know, so so you're kind of used to that way of working. But but in editing the movie and actually trying to craft the story, um, you you do kind of crave that one to one. You know, that one to one in the room stuff that comes from doing that. And it, there is something that doesn't quite happen. Like you know, so so it is a bit more challenging, but but it has been working, and we've we've had to you know everyone's had to adapt, haven't they? I mean across all industries, but but this I mean I was fortunate enough to have got to the end of the shoot before lockdown happened, yeah. so at least at least that you know um, so that it's definitely a part of the process that's perfectly possible for this. But in terms of creativity, it's an interesting question. Um, I, I mean now that we know we've got more time because we were supposed to open in October, now we know we're not opening until next June. That has opened up you know again sort of a lot of possibilities for mining mm. new scenes and mining new you know eventually when we get to sorting out protocols for shooting pickups and all of that kind of stuff that's going to you know affect it again so look like, yeah i mean it, it's 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 not that it's it's not what it was gonna be for sure yeah i, I was wondering if, if like, like i was thinking about like even chris nolan's tenant i'm like i wonder how much tenant's gonna change like as chris yeah. has all this time to you know that's that, that's a whole nother ball game about theaters and everything tell my audience in dc exactly what you're doing how they can help raise money because this is a very important thing for you personally you've been involved in these charities before um what exactly are you doing for my audience and how can they participate so, so the idea to to create what we're calling the Hobbitathon uh, came from you know weeks ago. I, I as an artist, as a, a, a person who wants to connect with with an audience, I wanted to find a way of meaningfully um, telling a story or in some way co connecting with people who are in lockdown, who are all all you know across the spectrum, going through lockdown in different ways, from people who are feeling incredibly isolated, who have lost people, who are deeply sad, to people who are actually finding the positives and, and are spending time with their families or, or, or able to discover different things about their own personality. I wanted to find a story that could somehow transport them in some way and take them on a journey outside of this world that we're living in and and yet it, it have a story that resonates with the world that we are living in and, and, it, and it seemed to me that there was this story that was sitting right in front of me that I've been part of and I have, have lived a part of uh, Bilbo Baggins journey in The Hobbit which which is you know he's in, in a sort of inverted kind of way going through what people are going through it, it, he's he's forced to go on a journey yeah but unwittingly kind of finds himself going along on a journey that he's not you know he's an armchair person he wants to sit at home he doesn't want to move anywhere mm. but yet he goes on this journey and discovers things about himself and how he relates to other peoples and other cultures and other parts of the world and and it, and he discovers things about his own personality discovers the way he's coping with 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 those changes and i and and so for me i, I just thought this is the perfect story that kind of resonates with that now where we are all we're going through a period of reflection you know we're finding out things about ourselves and at the same time as taking people on this epic adventure and big journey i also wanted to applaud and acknowledge the incredible uh, workers who are the frontline workers there's the nhs in our country the national health service um, charities who uh, people who are really putting themselves on the line every single second of every single day risking their lives while we're indoors feeling trapped they're actually you know they're fighting a tough battle of, of survival and so so that the, the chat the main charity that I'm, I'm trying to raise the money for in, in doing this epic live read of the Hobbit which is going to last about 12 hours 
10, between 10 and 12 hours, the entire story from beginning to end, is to raise money for that for, that, for the NHS in our country. Mm. And also another charity called Best Beginnings, which is a child health uh, charity, um, which which I've been I've been an ambassador for for many years. For but, six but, years, right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. But look, I mean, if people, uh, you know, because you're across the other side of the pond, and then the 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 WHO are doing extraordinary work in, in in the states, and also there are charities like Hunger that are that you that you guys have, which are dealing, you know, with people who have been you know literally demolished by by the situation here so so i the, the raising of the money if you want to donate to your own per, private personal charity that you care about the who or whatever please do so um but if you do want to to, to uh, you know donate to the charities that i'm closely associated with then then you can go to i'll give you the website it's www.gofundme.com slash the hobbitathon covid19 appeal I'll say that one more time. <laughs> yeah. www.gofundme.com forward slash the Hobbitathon COVID-19 appeal. And, and, and that will go to the, the charities that, um, that I'm involved in. How, how, is this the first time you've ever read the book in one setting? Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. now uh, have, you, have you planned out about how this is gonna go down from a eating perspective, a bathroom perspective? Like, are, 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 are you gonna like stop? Do you have stopping points? Or, or are you just gonna kind of say, all right, everybody, I'll be right back. Give me a second. I have to go get something to eat or some water. Do you, do you have breaks? Well, look, here's, here's the deal. The Hobbit, of course, the ho Hobbits as a, as a culture, it's a lot of their activity revolves around food. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm intending it for people who want to watch and come and watch maybe over a long period of time. Maybe they can't watch the whole thing. Of course, it's going to, as I say, last 10 hours, 12 hours. But for, for the diehards, you know, who want to hang in there, I'm expecting them to bring their, their first breakfasts, second breakfasts, 11s is, you know, <laughs> they, all their snacks so that they can, and I, I'll have mine around and I, I will have no bones about, you know, eating, you know, eating on route because I'm going to need to sustain myself and I'll be, I'll be drinking, you know, I'll be drinking a little bit of golden juice and, uh, you know, just to get the old throat going, uh, honey and lemon and ginger. I'll be drinking, um, all sorts of things. And then comfort breaks. Well, you know, when you got to go, you got to go. I'll be putting up a sign which says back in five minutes probably, <laughs> or something like that. And, uh, and, and then we can have a breather. Um, so, I think that's the only way. Look, this is, as I say, this is a live event. And if the cat walks in and jumps on the table, so be it. And yeah. screws up the computer and, and uh, I'm having to sort of go offline for a bit. That, that's, that's part of it. It's, a, it's, not, it's not a, I'm not reading an audio book version, you know? Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sort of doing, I can't go back and edit. It's, it's going to be live. So it'll, there's bound to be, you know, trips and stumbles and fumbles and all sorts of things. Do you think you'll go into character at all? Like, do you think you'll actually find yourself like reading at, like in character at all yeah yeah i mean that's the intention as i say it's not perfect it's not going to be a dry reading right just text it's it's gonna i'll try and bring it to life and and awesome. and, and make it feel like a you know a kind of semi-theatrical experience uh you know uh, and, and bring the characters to life and give them more voices and all bring them to life that way well 12 hours i mean that sounds like a lot but i remember spending a lot of time in <laughs> uh over a long time ago watching all three extended lord of the rings um and I, if you don't mind before before i let you go just a, just a couple questions about just like the, the 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 way movies make people feel and that's why i love that you're doing this is because entertainment and stories and movies like this have the ability to take us away and distract us, but also take us to a place that just for a couple hours at a time, just that, you know, you know, that's what you've done as a storyteller all of your life, and which is what I've loved about that. What is it about these films though, you know, that, that obviously that Peter Jackson put together all these years that are so special, um, you know, Lord of the Rings specifically, or even Hobbit, just in general, what is it about those films that you think people have just loved so much over the years? I think it's very much to do with two things. I mean, the authenticity that Peter Jackson and, and Fran and you know his wife Fran Walsh, the writers and Philippa Boynes, the, the way they crafted the worlds, um, you know, wetter digit, wet, wetter physical and wetter digital, the, the visual effects companies and the physical companies that made that those worlds come alive. There's an auth authenticity which is which is kind of un unbeatable, I think, in those movies. That, that those worlds are so thoroughly forensically um, worked out and and. Um, and brought, and uh, you know the, the the trouble that they that everyone went to to create that that 
a real reverence to the to the to the book. So you really feel it palpably feel the, the passion that comes through those pages coming through onto the screen, I think, in the in the in the movies. That's but also it's also to do with a sense of community because what Peter did exquisitely was to was to create a family, a family a, a sense of community for the actors who were down there making the films, which then extended to, to, to exclude, you know, including for the first time, he sort of broke the mold in terms of including the audiences in these yeah. movies and, and sharing the, the filmmaking experience, which, so it's, a, so for me, it's about, about, and which is why, again, it lends itself to, to creating a community tomorrow when I do this reading, it's, it's like having people gather around and, and, and share in the, in, in the event of, of, of these great, great, epic stories which have real character at the center and, and resonate with with our times and and last thing i'll ask you is what um we're i'm sitting here talking to you you're in your office you have you're, you're editing venom too uh, across the other room what other geeky stuff do you have in your house like from lord of the rings and the hobbit like do you do you have other props that you've kept over the years and anything you can show me i, mean, I don't even know what you have but it's so cool to see that stuff behind what you what have I got here that, that is easily at hand? I'll show you actually something from um, from from uh, Planet of the Apes, which is oh. from, so. This is God, so this I love is the lighting reference maquette, which comes on set with us. Oh this my Caesar. God! It's a, it's a Caesar, and um, so so the visual effects team bring this on set, to, and this is you know it's fully made up with hair, and and the detail in it's pretty incredible. It looks so um, real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Um, so, so that, so as the light, you know, as the lighting happens on set, then then they're able to take all of that information and then, and then put it into the computer. And I was given this uh, when we finished the last movie. So that's something that's very, very special to me. And uh, you know, <laughs> that's amazing. I, I, I and, we'll, and we'll always cherish. That's really, really cool. Well, listen, I'm going to let you go. I know you're doing other interviews, but thank you for the time today. Thank you for what you're doing. Everybody, uh, you heard the website from Andy. You can definitely go there, donate along, watch along. I'll be watching along as well. I cannot wait to see, uh, to see you read the book. And I also want to tell you before you go that I think you are a phenomenal filmmaker. And I think a lot of that has to do with how integrated you were as an actor on films like Lord of the Rings, because you really kind of had to have that relationship with Peter and like and, and all the filmmakers you've worked with over the years. And I and I see when you make a movie as a director, I see Andy's vision, but I also see like what you've learned as an actor and how you operate with like Andrew Garfield, like you know, like everything like that you communicate as a filmmaker, I can just see it come through the screen. So I just oh, want to cool. say you're a great storyteller. Well, I really I think. can only say I, I was fortunate enough to learn from the best, and, and, and particularly the breaks that Peter gave me were, you know, a dream come true. And, and he, he literally, uh, you know, mentored mentored me as a filmmaker. So so I, I, I owe a huge amount to, to, to Peter. I mean, he's phenomenal. Well, that's amazing. Well, Andy, thank you so much. This has been an absolute pleasure. Always great to see you. 